Hi, I'm Bernard Scott. I'm a former student of your, of your school, but that was a long, long time ago. I'm certain your parents were not even born when I was at school here. This recent picture of me was taken uh, on the London Eye as I was looking down on Westminster, and it shows roughly how I look now. And this picture shows how I looked at the time that the main building at your school was being built. I live in the United States now, in the state of Florida. But recently I came back to see family and friends again for the first time in quite a few years. On this visit I met up with an old school friend, Donald Smith, and we decided <coughs> excuse me, to take a look around at some of the places where we grew up in the 1930s and 40s to see what had changed. This is my friend Don Smith. He did his national service uh, back in the 1950s as a grenadier guardsman. I did mine a little later uh, in the RAF as a photographer. On our, on our nostalgia trip, we went to see the houses where we'd grown up. Don is seen here standing in front of his home, in former home in Elm Park, and I'm seen in front of my old home with the lady who now lives there. On that same day, we visited our old school. Now it's the Sanders Draper School uh, and Science College. When we were there, it was called Sutton's Senior Boys School. The school was divided into two halves. As you face the main entrance, uh, everything to the left was for boys and to the right, it was girls only. When we introduced ourselves at the uh, reception desk, the head teacher, Mr. McCurchin, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and his staff greeted us very warmly and gave us a fascinating tour around the school through some corridors we had last trodden on more than 60 years before. This photograph shows my class back in 1947 when I was about 12 years old. I have a story to tell and a memory from almost every face in that picture. That includes the teacher, Mr. Pike, in the middle. His way of getting you to remember things he told you sometimes took the form of him taking you by the ear and hitting your head, not too gently, against the uh, wall ch chalkboard. In this picture, I'm one of the kids in the lower left front row, seated uh, in the front, and I'm the second from the left. In this picture, you can see more detail. The boy on the right in the picture it was my buddy, Freddie Edwards. I admired him. He was a boxer, but he was not a very good one, and all of my memories of watching him box he has a bloody nose. Now, this picture shows the teaching staff in those years, uh, the uh, late 40s. The headmaster, as he was called then, was Mr. Lovett. He's the man in the center of the front row in this picture. Uh, this was still the age when authorities believed you can spare the rod and spoil the child. And Mr. Lovett wielded a mean cane uh, in his desire to not spoil the child. My parents didn't uh, throw away my report book and consequently I'm able to look back at my four years at, school, at the Sutton's Boys School. It shows that I first went there in September of 1945. The war in Europe had ended uh, in May of that year and less than a month before that date Japan had surrendered to end World War II altogether after the first atomic bombs had been dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As I look back on these reports, I'm amazed that I was somehow able to survive and even thrive in the competitive world out there. I can see as I leaf through the pages, I was weak in arithmetic, geography and history and could be better in English literature and composition. 
I had not really attended a, a schoolroom until the age of eight because the authorities did not want more than f a small number of children, probably, I think it was four, being together in the same place because of the constant bombing of the area. Consequently, it was left to parents uh, to try to teach their children the basics in groups of four in uh, neighborhood living rooms. Many children were evacuated from the area at that time too. But by 1945, the war was a thing of the past and it was time to move on. I was at Sutton's for a little over four years. The classes, or houses as we called them then, were very large. Uh, my average was uh, close to 40 kids in the same class. The school leaving age for dummies like me uh, at that time was 15. So, in late 1949, Mr. Lovett signed my leaving certificate, which you see here. His comments in the certificate included that I had a, quote, keen interest particularly in photography. This led to my first lucky break in my career by getting a job basically as a tea boy and messenger in the photo department of the London Daily Mirror in Fleet Street. So it was that at 8.50 a.m. on January the 2nd, 1950, I entered the building shown here. It was located in Fetter Lane, just off of Fleet Street, where all the major daily newspapers were located at that time. The London where I went to work was a grey and dismal place, not yet recovered from the blitzed bombing in the previous years. This picture, taken at the height of the Blitz, shows St Paul's Cathedral standing as a sort of symbol of hope in the midst of devastating bombing. But this view of London from St Paul's was still much like this when I began my working life in nearby Fleet Street. Strangely though, the bombing in central London brought some relief to Elm Park area where I lived. Hitler, outraged by a bombing raid by the RAF on Berlin, decided to switch from trying to eliminate fighter stations to bombing London, and that brought some relief in our area. My father had uh, volunteered to join the RAF, and he was posted to a, a, a quiet base in Scotland uh, where very little seemed to happen, while my mother and older brother and myself uh, took our blankets and gas masks to a damp, cold Anderson shelter dug into the end of our garden. Uh, and that was our uh, lifestyle for about 18 months. We lived in what was called a Rosewood house in Elm Park. Uh, my small bedroom was like the one uh, uh, seen on the top left of this picture. Our Rosewall house was never as badly damaged as this one, but for a couple of years we had no glass left in any of the windows because of bomb blasts, so we kept the weather out using uh, roofing felt. In fact, one of my most vivid memories of the war was swinging on a, a, a front garden gate, identical to the one you see in the foreground in this picture. Uh, and uh, seeing a, a delayed fuse time bomb uh, exploding uh, that had been dropped the previous night uh, and in, in the middle of the street where I lived. A lady who was looking into the hole at the time was killed, but her son standing beside her survived. And my lucky life continued because all the chunks of the street that landed nearby. I remember seeing several of these type of Spitfire victory rolls which indicated mission success in shooting down an enemy plane uh, as they returned to the base in Haunch. So as I showed you earlier, this is our, our, how our house looks now. It has undergone a lot of renovation improvements from when I lived there. 
After a five-year apprenticeship in photography at the Daily Mirror, uh, I was able to uh, do my national service in the RAF and then come back uh, to work as a darkroom printer. But then I got promoted to a job which gave me an opportunity to do learn how to do news page layouts. And it was this that led me to a job opportunity being offered a picture editor position uh, for a tabloid newspaper uh, located in Madison Avenue, New York City. The pay and the thought of a, uh, the chance of, to li at least take a look at America proved irresistible. So, in 1965, I emigrated. It was several years later, uh, on one of my return visits to see my friends and family, that my, I learned my Sutton's Senior Boys' School had been renamed to honor Sanders Draper, the Spitfire pilot who sacrificed his life in 1943 to avoid hitting the school where about 600 children would have been in the classrooms. I realize now that I owe him a debt of gratitude for his sacrifice because I had a school to go to uh, shortly after that but my gratitude is much more than that because my older brother Peter was in the school that day and who knows what damage a Spitfire laden with fuel and ammunition might have caused had it hit the school. In a less direct way you too owe Sanders Draper a debt of gratitude because if he and the other brave young men who fought and won the Battle of Britain had failed, God knows what would have happened. This is how Winston Churchill made that argument back then. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. But all of that must seem like ancient history to you now. This picture shows the footprint of the old Hornchurch airfield uh, placed over the uh, modern street map. And there are uh, many names there that uh, bear witness to the heroes of those times. Tuck Road, Bader Way, Mallon Square. Names like that. And of course, the Sanders Draper School. Sanders was laid to rest in a World War II memorial area of the St. Andrew's Churchyard in Hornchurch. There's been a church on that site since the 1200s and it carries still now the bull's head that gave Horn Church its name. The headstone on Sanders' grave bears these words. Take joy from here and fill your heart with living. This man would have it so. So now Sanders hopes to live on in the students of the school that bears his name. And as they prepare to move on to a future made much brighter by his sacrifice, we're sure he would be very, very proud. Good luck.